In addition to being a car company, Tesla is also an energy company, which I'm sure you knew with the solar roof, the solar panels, and the power wall, but they have done a new thing here, and it's something I recently discovered that makes them look much more like a utility than just a manufacturer of these products. The cool part is you can help further their mission buy a power wall and end up getting paid to do so. I don't mean in 10 years it'll save you some money. I mean, they will send you a check for helping them further this mission along. Now there's a lot of details to cover and how this all works, so stick with me, hit that like button, and let's dive in. The grid isn't just one thing. In fact, even when we say the grid, it sounds like, yeah, it's that you know thing out back over there. But through this process, the past few weeks I've been researching this video, I learned a whole lot, and it'll really help if we just go through a high-level overview of how this works to then understand how you can benefit yourself. Okay, so at the high level, the grid has essentially two parts. There is the part that generates energy, whether it be a solar farm, a nuclear power plant, or a coal plant, or whatever the case may be. Then there is the part that gets that energy to you and your home that you use to charge your phone, which you're now watching this on. And those two things combine to essentially create what we know as of the grid. In regulated states, the folks that generate the energy, the energy suppliers, we'll call them, are also the people that deliver that energy, the grid operators, as we'll call them. In deregulated states, of which there are many in the United States in varying degrees, you don't have to be the same company, which means if you and me with our lotto winnings wanted to take that money and go start a solar farm and start selling it to individual customers or even to other utilities, we are free to do so. So there is a distinction, it's not applicable everywhere, but that is kind of the high level overview of just how that bit works. There's also a lot of hardware involved, such as substations, high voltage transmission lines that actually carry the energy from the generating station to then the distribution lines, which are the power lines you're typically seeing in your neighborhood, which are then connected to your house. Now, obviously there are a million more details and things that I glossed over there, but just trying to think about it at a high level, you have energy generators and energy distributors. Now is when we take that red pill and go a little bit further to see how far the rabbit hole really goes. Tesla currently offers three consumer products on the energy side. They offer the solar panels, the solar roof, and a power wall. Now, these are things that you and me can take advantage of, and they're actually really great. I've done videos on all of them. I'm sure you've seen some of them. And combined, these products help us become like a mini power plant. We can generate our own energy, store that energy, and then use that energy. At my house, I'm participating in this as well. I have a 5.3 PV or photovoltaic solar panel system, and then two Tesla power walls giving me 27 kilowatt hours of off-grid or backup storage, which really just tugs on my American heartstrings of independence and freedom. The things that just, I don't know, it's something innate in our culture here. And for folks not from here, you, you know, obviously you have your opinions on that, that's fine. But there's just something really incredible about knowing there can be a power outage, there can be a global pandemic, whatever is going on out there in the world, I don't care when it comes to my energy. I can be lighting my home, heating it, cooling it, all of those things without worrying about what the grid or anyone else has to say about it. Now, as I mentioned, I have 27 kilowatt hours of offline storage in my power walls, and that for my one home will provide about a day's worth of backup if there was no other energy at all. Again, I have solar, so I would be getting that energy even on a cloudy day I'll get some or you can think of it like these two white boxes next to my master bathroom can provide about 15 or 20 of my neighbors with an hour of off-grid power in the event of an outage so yeah it's really cool that literally for not an absorbent amount of money in fact it's pretty economical and it saves you money in the long run I can be a power generator 
in a very limited amount of space. My home's only a thousand square feet. I don't have some giant ranch here that I'm able to, uh, to do this with. And that's what's really powerful about these technologies. What happens is you end up with a sort of decentralized grid where instead of having major infrastructure in one location providing energy to everyone, you essentially have little kind of power generating stations all over. And that is where this whole vision of Tesla becoming more of a utility starts to take form. This is what they call virtual power plants. And remember, the grid must get their energy from somewhere, whether that's from their own generation stations or from any other little mini or even bigger power generating stations that might be out there. So this is where the master stroke for Tesla really starts to become a reality. With this virtual power plant concept, what they're doing is networking together all of the homeowners with power walls, creating essentially a decentralized energy generation station. It's actually many, many stations, but combined together and then selling that energy back to the grid operator or the utility. Like where I live, it's sdg and &E. California has a lot of other big ones. Wherever you live, you, know, you probably have one or two in your area. So they are becoming an energy supplier to the grid operator. And it turns out that battery storage is much more reliable and even cheaper than some of the other sources where the grid operators are getting their energy today. Now, Tesla hasn't rolled this out nationwide yet, but it is in a few different places. And I spoke recently with a guy named Mike up in Massachusetts, who said that last year he participated in eight events. This is when the grid needed more energy than they could provide and they went to him. They actually pulled energy from his Tesla Powerwall. And in the end, after a year for basically doing nothing different, just having it be configured in a part of this program, he got over $700 in cash. I mean, it was a check, but it was real money. It wasn't like a credit on his bill or something else. And that to me is just so cool that you can literally help Tesla advance their mission by supporting them, by buying one of these products, do good for yourself by providing energy backup and even other ways of doing rate arbitrage or what's called peak shaving and saving money, and then earn money back just by letting it be used in this kind of virtual power plant, which again, even helps the grid get cleaner and more resilient and everything. It is a really brilliant kind of situation that I was just thrilled to see. This is a part of what Tesla calls connected solutions. Now, as I mentioned, it's not available everywhere. Um, there are a few different locations such as National Grid in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and then Eversource in Massachusetts as well, and Connecticut. So. Northeast states, there's a few of them participating in this, and I hope they roll it out further because this is just the coolest thing, I think. And here's how it actually worked kind of in detail for Mike. He lives in Massachusetts, and he is a part of the National Grid, that's the utility name, the National Grid's Demand Solution Program. With this program, he let them pull from their power wall eight times. In the, the app, in the Tesla app, he can actually see a different icon for where this energy goes. And it's different than say what I have in California where we don't have this kind of program. And for him, he essentially said he noticed zero difference. He didn't have an, a problem with the outage. He didn't have a problem charging his car. He didn't have any other changes to his behavior and earlier this year in 2020 for the 2019 year, he got a check for over 700 bucks. Awesome. Yes, that's what we all should be hoping for. And the reason that National Grid and a few of the other ones out there are doing this is because it turns out it's just a cheaper and better solution than firing up a natural gas peaker plant, which takes time, is expensive to maintain, and is just expensive to even generate the energy. So think about what's going on in Hornsdale in Australia there with the Tesla battery there that has saved those customers millions and millions of dollars by having to use the battery instead of firing up those gas peaker plants. It's a really cool scenario where it's just better in every way. And in fact, if you're wondering where your energy 
energy is coming from right now, they have these things called ISOs. And so here's the one in California. It shows that as of today, when I'm recording this, 61% of the energy is coming from renewables and of that 71% is solar. So you can actually kind of go dig in and see where all the energy is coming from now, if you guys are curious. But imagine that over time, as these virtual power plants kind of come online and more people have them, then the this chart would change a little bit. This mix might change. And in the end, it will save people money hopefully everyone, not just those that are able to participate in the program. Now, I also said that this makes the grid stronger. And I mean that very literally because a decentralized solution versus a centralized one is just gonna be more resilient to any issues. And so depending who you talk to, depending where you live, storms, down trees, fires, all kinds of problems can lead to huge power outages. I know where I live in San Diego, several years ago, we had an outage. Something happened in Yuma, which is a couple hundred miles away, that took out power for all of the San Diego region, which is over 3 million people. And so think about it. If every little station here is providing energy, we're not reliant on this big centralized infrastructure. This is also how it works in tech, where I spent 20 years in the field of data. We essentially learned very on that in order to index the internet and search through it, you couldn't just have one massive computer. You had to have tens of thousands, or nowadays it's more like tens of millions of computers running that service. So if part of the region goes down or even a few computers go down, everything is still humming along. So that is essentially where we're going here. And that makes the grid just so much more stronger than having this massive central infrastructure. Now, there are other utilities doing things similar to this that don't lead to you actually getting a paycheck, but do provide either better, cheaper services or things like the Powerwall for as little as 15 bucks a month. One of those is Green Mountain Power in in Vermont. And I recently spoke with their chief innovation officer, Josh Costungwe, about this. And here's what he had to say about their program and what they're doing. Basically, the way it works today is um, you can you can get uh, two power walls, which will cover your home. And for most customers, easily cover for, you know, in the event of an outage, at least a day, typically longer. We've had um, customers go for multiple days and uh, and run their power wall. And we are able to use those those batteries as as like little peaker plants basically as little power generation stations that during really peak energy demand times the really hottest days or the coldest nights we can pull from those batteries and help manage the grid help lower how much energy we need from other sources around around new england um and and by doing that we're able to save all of our customers quite a bit of money and in turn we take some of that savings and we make the battery system cheaper for the customer. Um, so when uh, the, the program we had running, we deployed over 2000 um, systems with customers and it was, it was $30 a month to put two batteries in your home and uh, power up your, your home. And if you pair it with solar on your roof, for example, the solar will actually replenish the battery and it can it can last even longer during an outage. Now that's only part of what Green Mountain Power or GMP is doing. If you wanna see the full version of that, go ahead and subscribe below and I'll probably post it later on or kind of for members only. Now, this is a real exciting time and I love the idea that you can help advance our transition to sustainable energy all while actually earning money. I really do hope that other utilities out there, large utilities, really start to adopt this because they do see a savings out of it. So they're not just doing it out of the kindness of their heart. This is something that will actually help on their bottom line. And those arguments, from my experience in business, tend to win. And if you are curious about getting a power wall, check out this playlist I created over here about everything I've covered on it. Like I said, I have two at my house along with solar panels. And I've been able to do some interesting things in terms of peak shaving, saving money by using it at different times a day, and lots more. So have a look, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.